My name is Mark Mikel, and I'm a Wikimedia researcher. I joined the movement in 2011. You may possibly know me from past projects. I've been doing several things on Azure engagement, diversity, and community health. But today, I'm going to talk about administrative pages. Uh, these are admin pages, and they were created 20 years ago. They are the backbone. They are what enable us to create Wikipedia and make it successful. So we own them a lot. We were an experiment at work. However, what is all, sometimes it's not maintained. It is a steep, close to new ideas and to new people. That's not Wikipedia, necessarily, but in general. Admin pages are the jungle, for two reasons. They are hard to get through as an editor, uh, for, especially for newcomers, and they have not been explored by researchers. If admin pages are the jungle, we need to make them more welcoming and inclusive to all editors. I don't want anybody to misinterpret me. I mean, they grow organically. That's what they think of a, a jungle, organic growth, like the rest of Wikipedia. Um, when there is a need, when somebody remembers, um, they, they, they are changed. But the organic growing may create some unnecessary clutter, uh, some things that are not up to date, uh, that they are not written from the perspective of the reader, and so on. So, as I said, they are the jungle because they are not explored uh, from their research perspective. And so we have an opportunity. There is very, very little research on admin pages. This shocked me. Since Wikipedia is one of the most uh, researched objects on the internet, if not the most, very few academics and scientific studies pay attention to admin pages. And when they do, they, they pay attention to uh, policies mostly. We know that in 2008, uh, Wikipedia was uh, already seen as a, a very complex developed bureaucracy. And later on, in 2013, when the declining number of editors started, uh, Halfacker saw that, that the number of newcomers' uh, contributions to policies were not as accepted as much as those made by more seasoned editors. Newcomers uh, often experience moments of frustration uh, navigating policies and procedures. And uh, development of policies tends to be similar across languages and extends and replicates what has been done in English Wikipedia. This is what we know that the scientific community has studied on, on uh, admin pages. Um, to have an idea of uh, general Wikipedia uh, research, um, the scientific community covers so many different topics. Uh, topical analysis, uh, content biases, contextualization and cross-language analysis, content quality, readability, participation, readership, vandalism, and so on. These are topics that could be explored for admin pages, but today they are not. So for this reason, I believe we can say that there is a knowledge gap. Admin pages are a topic we do not know about, or not enough. Admin pages are a type of content. They are the content that regulates Wikipedia. Uh, maybe because we are proud of the result, the product, we hide them. Because we think that uh, they are the process, uh, and the process is what we take care of. And, and the product is what the people consume and, uh, and what they should be able to, to read. And maybe because of this, people do not study them. And there is no framework that organizes knowledge about them or analyze their characteristics across languages. Differently with, with that with content gaps that are now that they are studied in, in many dimensions, gender, culture, and so on, we know very little about what's available in every language. And so we do not keep track of how they grow and, uh, and what's being changed across languages. Um, all in all, we like a, a systematic understanding of admin pages. For these reasons, and to fill this gap, I want to present this uh, initiative called Wikipedia Administrative uh, uh, Pages Analytics. Uh, it is a research project that set the first stone to measure and improve maintenance and inclusion in admin pages across language editions. In fact, we would like to envision a community that is, it is uh, aware of the state of the admin pages maintains them and engages in, uh, with all types of Wikipedians in updating them and growing them uh, uh, further. For these reasons, uh, the project principles are efficiency, maintenance, and inclusion. There is a quote 
by Andrew Grove, an Hungarian-American businessman and engineer who served as the third CEO of Intel, that they like particularly. It says, let chaos reign, and in chaos I will reign. I think that this idea summarizes well the, the project, uh, because we don't mean to, create the, to change the jungle, to cut it down. We just need the analytical tools, the aerial view, to make sense of it. And then uh, this will, allow, uh, will give us more control to, to reign in, in, this, in this jungle, in this chaos, and, and, to, and to make better decisions. For this reason, in MP Pages Analytics, we need three uh, main objectives. The first one is to understand the state of development of the MP Pages to know how developed they are, uh, how val valuable they are. Um, they are up to date, not up to date, they are across languages, they are not, so we want to understand the state of the development. Uh, the second objective is to classify the admin pages according to different types because they are not all the same. And the third one, which is the, the practical, uh, the practical uh, objective, is to create applications to support uh, the addition of admin pages. And so to, to channel back research to the communities, I will try to communicate to explain these three objectives uh, and um, and uh, how we reach them and, and the results we have so far. Um, to reach the objective, we need an approach. We need to collect admin pages. We need to classify uh, them into types, and we need to create practical tools, dashboards, which allow them to allow us to uh, to, to play with the with the admin page to look for for admin pages. Um, for this project, and I'm hiding a bit the technical part, but we can, you can find them in these uh, links. We are using all that available in dubswikimedia.org, um, tools like Python, Pandas, SQLite, and uh, Toolforge as, a, as the, um, the, the server in order to process the data. <coughs> so let, let's go to the, the first objective. So collecting the admin pages. What is an admin page? It is basically the type of page that helps Wikipedia achieve its purpose protocols, conventions, help pages, etc. They are not content. No personal pages or discussions, but they help to create the content. If we look at the different name spaces, uh, these are the ones that they are not written. Content or discussions. Uh, most typically, admin pages are number four and number uh, 12. So, um, Wikipedia namespace and help namespace. And uh, uh, a very rapid uh, analysis, a quick analysis show is that the admin pages, 4 and 12, um, they, are, they range between a 1% and a 70% of all the pages created. A smaller wikis, they have a, a, a smaller percentage, so it means that they are not just a smaller in terms of uh, overall content, but also in terms of the, this uh, type of content for coordination and for rulemaking. Um, let's examine some of the characteristics of the pages to understand their value. In this graph, we can see that there is a constant creation of admin pages over, over time. And we see languages like uh, Arabic, Catalan, German, Russian, English, and so on. And what we rapidly see is that admin, create, admin pages are created over time. So th th there is no end to it. Um, groups of wiki, wiki projects, village fund, they are always uh, being created. But we also see in, uh, um, in, in different colors, we see the, the number of interwiki links that each uh, admin page has. And uh, the colorful area is in the first years. Um, zero interwiki links is in, is in gray. If we remove the zero interwiki links and we look at the same graph, and we see only the colorful ones, we see that the, the most valuable pages are in the first, in the early years of Wikipedia. And it makes sense because the pages with more interwiki links, it means that they exist in more languages and so they are more valuable. Um, in orange and in pink, we see that uh, 11 to 50, 50 to 300. So these are the, the real valuable admin pages. Um, the different number of admin pages across languages for example, 1,500 in English and 400 in, in, uh, in German and here in the axis, means that they are very, very different uh, um, number of pages like, across languages. And so there are gaps. There are pages that could be interesting to export and import across languages. And this 
give us the opportunity to learn from each other. Following with the studies, with the, with the analysis of the admin pages we see in this graph, the creation of admin pages over time but colored by orphan pages and not orphan. Orphan pages are those with zero in-links. Um, a page, uh, if inter uh, were useful to see valuable pages, in-links are also uh, valuable because they imply relevance. An admin page with no other pages pointing at them are less valuable because they are isolated from the rest of the, of the pages. Um, here we see the uh, orphan pages over time and we see that, that some of them were, they were created many years ago and they are still orphaned which means that there are many admin pages that could be forgotten there and nobody paying them attention anymore. And, uh, and so we saw that some are valuable, some are not valuable. Um, if we look at, the, at how these pages are edited, and in this graph we see the pages created over time, like the previous graphs, but they are colored by the, um, by the ear of the first edit of their editors who edited them, so it's a it's a median of of, uh, of the the generational uh, moment of, of the editors who edit these admin pages. Obviously, uh, uh, older pages they are edited by older editors, but we also see that the, the newer pages from the the last five years they are also edited by, for example, here in Catalan we see that. 2009, 2006, so for very, very seasoned editors, very better editors. Uh, we can conclude that admin pages are generally not treated by newbies or editors from the past, from the last five years. And so we could say that there is a problem of inclusion. We need to make admin pages more, um, not available to everyone, but to be created by everyone. And uh, finally, to understand the value of admin pages, we can uh, check the percentage of admin pages by the day, the number of days since they were last edited. And here the legend shows us that one week ago, one month ago, six months, uh, two, one to three years. In orange, we see one to three years, two to five. In pink, uh, five to ten, ten to fifteen. And so we can, we can uh, easily see that the orange and the pinks and the, the reds are taking a very, very large uh, percentage of the, of the admin pages. This means that, that the majority of admin pages, they, are, they have not been edited for one, two years, three, uh, two to five, five, five to ten. There is an exception, which is English Wikipedia, in which we see that the 40% of the English Wikipedia where they were uh, admin pages, they were edited uh, one to six months ago. So this is positive news among the overall uh, conclusion that they are not edited as much uh, or they are not edited in, in general. Uh, so two conclusions stand out from, from this quick analysis. There are content gaps, so we, we see different number of uh, admin pages, and there are valuable pages among the admin pages and uh, that they are underrated, that they, are, they have not been edited in the past the, uh, years. So for this reason, we, 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 we conclude that it's important to, to work with them. And um, it's important to engage editors who are not from previous generations, but from the, from the last ones. And uh, because we, we, we could invite newcomers and, uh, and um, tell them to, to rewrite them and to, to make them uh, closer to how a newbie understands them. And, uh, and now we can move to the second objective and classify the admin pages according to different types to understand what's the landscape of, of admin pages. So what are the different types of admin pages? Well, to, under, to uh, answer this question, we can, uh, we can look at the main categories within the category of uh, Wikipedia administration in Wikipedia, and we see the subcategories. What I did basically is to look for the categories with more interwiki links and more, uh, more subpages and uh, subcategories and pages uh, below them. And uh, I identified six main admin pages policies and guidelines, help pages, essays, village spam, tools, wiki projects uh, are the most important ones uh, in namespace 4 and, and 12. Uh, in order to categorize all the admin pages according to different types, I used um, uh, Wikidata properties, instance of, and, and then the, the type of admin page, help page or, or policy, for example, are the ones available. Um, the category graph, 
So with these categories uh, from English Wikipedia that are available in many languages, running down the graph and collecting pages up to the fifth level, and the namespace, when this implies a certain uh, uh, type of admin, uh, of admin page, which is the case of the help page. Um, here we see that for the different types, depending on the different uh, on one type or another, we can use one, two, or three strategies to categorize a page as an, an admin page. And uh, what are the results of this categorization? Well, really bad, to be honest. Uh, the results show the following, that uh, using these three approaches, only 5% of the admin pages could be categorized uh, um, to one type or another. This is very, very little. First, I thought that the approach is wrong, but uh, uh, given that I'm using all the data that is available, with data, categories, and namespaces, then uh, we, we need to understand that, that these pages are under-categorized. The editors do not use uh, um, all, the, all the, the, the approaches in order to, to, to make them clear, to make clear that these pages belong to one type or, or another. And so it, it means that they are created and, and, uh, and they are, uh, are not categorized properly. Um, at the same time, what I uh, did was to look at the number of interwiki links. And so I saw that the admin pages with more interwiki links, they tend to be more categorized. Interwiki links, they, they show whole valuable admin pages because they exist across languages. So it makes sense that the more valuable, the, the more categorized they are. And uh, is, this, is this a problem? Not depends. It depends. To create a, a, a good taxonomy, it is a problem. Because we don't know um, um, the entire group of admin pages, and the types they belong to. Although we we'll look for the most important types, and so we can we can think that that uh, that there are more types of admin pages. But to create applications, which is the third uh, objective, it it may be enough. And uh, with this, we go with the objective number three: to create applications to support editing of admin pages. We need to help editors find valuable pages. And uh, for this, we're going to create screening tools. In medicine, a screening tool is, is a tool that allows you to see uh, some, some particular uh, characteristics that uh, make you understand what, what's, what's going on. Uh, if it's something there is a problem, or if it's valuable, and, and so on. To create uh, screening tools, we need metrics. Metrics that can help us to um, to understand what is valuable or not valuable at the page. These are dimensions that can help us to, to make sense of uh, different admin pages. Completeness metrics, number of bytes, number of references, images can tell us if a page is, is very well developed, it's important. Relevance metrics are the number of links, number of interwiki links, uh, can tell us if a, pa a page is really worth uh, attention, is very relevant to, to the Wikipedia, so it's a, an internal uh, form of relevance. Popularity, which you could say that it is an external form of relevance, could be easily seen with page views. These are three very important dimensions. We have uh, activity, number of edits, <coughs> editors, disagreement, number of reverts, engagement, number of editors, inclusion, number of uh, new uh, admins or newcomers in the past 60 days. Uh, recently, the days since the, um, the five uh, last edits were made, or the last edit was made. All these dimensions can help us to uh, create tools that allow editors to look for admin pages that deserve uh, some attention. I'm going to present three three different screening tools, and I'm going to say that they are super, super, super experimental in alpha version. So you can try them, but they, they may not work entirely, because we are changing them. So this is more an explanation of the concept. The first one is called page across languages. The second one is called page gaps. And the third one is called under edited pages. So let's go with the first one. Page across languages is very simple. It allows you to introduce a, a page title and the metrics you want, and then you can compare the version of the page across the different languages. And uh, browse the results. Let's see an example. So in this case, we want to choose, let's say, uh, neutral point of view, the policy. We can choose the language uh, and, uh, and the article name or, or the quiten. And then we choose some, uh, some columns we, we, uh, of the metric we want, to, we want to check. 
date of creation, day since last edit, and so on. And uh, he, here, is, here are the results. This is the table that the tool provides us. And in this table, we see that, um, that this, this page, uh, Notes of Span of View, has, for example, uh, has not been edited for 3,000 days in, in Catalan Wikipedia. So they, they since last edit is, is here. Three, more than 3,000 days since that. Uh, it um, has not been edited for, for more than 3,000 days, uh, which is uh, a lot. Uh, we also see that the, the, this policy exists in, in 121 Wikipedias out of the 320 language editions that exist today. And I think that this is very little considering the importance of this policy, and, and so it, it raises uh, some sort of, of red flag. Or it, it's a red light that we need to do something and encourage as more wikis to create this essential policy. So we, the second tool is called Page Gaps. With it, we can search uh, for admin pages that exist in one language edition, but they are missing in, in a, another language edition. Um, in this case, uh, to try it out, we can select, for example, the target language where the gaps are, which is Romanian uh, Wikipedia, and a source language, a source language where the content is, and the, the, the Wikipedia where we want to borrow some new po some policies. We choose, for example, English Wikipedia. Then we can choose the type of admin page if we want, or a, a namespace, and to retrieve the articles, the, I mean the, the admin pages by a, a specific metric that could be, for example, the number of in links that, as we said, a number of in links points uh, at, uh, at relevance. And then to sort the content, the results, the 500 articles by another different metric, which could be the, the number of page views or, or um, a different one. Um, here we see on the left that the uh, pages in English Wikipedia that are not available in, in Romanian Wikipedia. And we can check the number of edits, days since the last edit in the Wikilinks, in links, page views, <coughs> and number of editors. We see that, for example, um, Wikipedia non-free content has over a million in links and 8,000 uh, page views last month, so it must be a valuable uh, uh, policy that uh, is missing in, in Romanian Wikipedia and perhaps it should be created. So this tool uh, uh, gives you ideas of, uh, of admin pages that might be useful to your Wikipedia which, uh, in which it is not available yet. And uh, the third tool, this one is called uh, under edited uh, pages and uh, it, it allows you to find admin pages that may be valuable but they, are not, they have not been edited enough or, or recently. And uh, it follows a structure which is very similar to the previous one. So um, let's take uh, Polish Wikipedia as an example, which is the language edition in the interface. Then we choose the uh, admin page type, help pages, let's say, and the admin page namespace, we don't need to, to touch them. We don't need to select them because we are selecting the page type. And then we can retrieve the content by a specific metrics. And interwiki and page views are, are metrics of uh, um, relevance and uh, popularity, so they are valuable ones. That they, let's say a, a page that has many interwiki and many page views is a, a very good one. And then it uses a variety of front, a variety of frontier, which is a, a calculation that shows that um, the pages that uh, have more interwiki links and page views, uh, they, are, they are in the frontier, so it means that they, they, have, uh, they are in a specific place, uh, combinations that that in which there are no, in which there are no other pages that are better than them in both dimensions. If we choose one uh, uh, metric to retrieve the pages, to to um, to retrieve the pages, um, then it's simply listing, ranking the, the pages with the, with uh, with one metric, so not creating the this frontier. And uh, and then we can select the columns that we want to to check: the date, the date of creation, number of bytes uh, in links. Um, whatever we think that it's uh, uh, interesting to us. And finally, to, we can sort the results by, by uh, uh, another metric. That, um, I suggest uh, to look for under edited pages, to look for the days since the last edit, but we can select, select for example, the, the percentage of days in which the page has been edited since it was created, or we can select the number of uh, 
um, the number of editors and to see uh, pages with very very few editors that may be interesting that if there are few editors but they are very important it means that that, that this page uh, cannot uh, main, uh, a single editor may not be really, should not be responsible for uh, for, for it and, and so it's important that we, need, we engage with more editors and the results here on the table we see the, the polish wikipedia hub pages with more in the wiki and page views and less edit it strikes me as uh, uh, important that this one has not even been edited for uh, 800 days, more than over 800 days. It has over uh, 500, uh, 5,000 uh, inlinks, so it's a very important one. And, uh, and it, it exists in, in 52 Wikipedia, so it's an important one that, at, uh, that maybe uh, the period of 500 days, so which is over two years, it's too much and we, we need to update it. This page is uh, about graphic license uh, descriptions. I'm not going to pronounce it in Polish, um, um, not to uh, butch uh, the, the language pronunciation, I'm sorry. Uh, but it's a, uh, it's a page that is important according to, to these features. So, so um, and some, some others may be important too, but overall we can say that Poly Wikipedia has a page, their pages quite up to date. And uh, all the languages, uh, um, all the other languages, they have uh, uh, less well-maintained pages, and so this will help us in uh, in uh, in looking for valuable pages that need maintenance in, in this jungle of admin pages, in which there are so many. And so we we need to look for for shortcuts. Uh, conclusions: um, We can see that the that the small Wikipedias can easily grow their relevant happy pages because they are gaps across languages. And it's surprising that the neutral point of view exists only in 121 pages out of the 300. Notability exists in 96, and we have, uh, we have work to do. We need to support the small wikis and uh, fill up in pages. We need to support uh, bigger wikis and, uh, and, uh, and tell them to have the pages maintained, well maintained. Uh, let's the idea is to reign in this chaos and, and uh, invite newcomers to, to, to this editing process. Not leave the, the work only to, to veterans. Um, I mean, pages are essential and they should be a, a bridge between the different generations of editors. And uh, the role of this project, uh, uh, I mean, pages analytics, is to, is to give uh, tools to, to have a, an idea, to get a glimpse of how well we are doing, and to find admin pages. So what can you do as C communities? Um, I cannot give much advice, but I have to say that the academies, they have the capacity to organize and uh, create programs and uh, events to, uh, to do what's less possible for the individual. And, uh, and you can give feedback to this project because it's essential that we cover the use cases. So uh, the way that editors edit, I'm an editor myself, but I don't know uh, the variety of uh, strategies, techniques, and, tactics to edit pages and so if the tools can support better uh, the community then uh, it's, uh, it's better research and uh, as researchers we can, uh, we can do uh, many things, we can, we can improve the data sets this is the first uh, project to deal with admin pages so uh, by providing data sets we are uh, encouraging more research, more applications um, this is the first one, not the last one so um, I think that, that these are tools that they require a lot of work in terms of usability. And uh, I'm hopeful that after these ones, they will come more and better. We need to open this avenue of work uh, because admin pages, they really, really matter. And if you have any question, please uh, do not hesitate to contact me. I want to finish this presentation with two golden mottos of this project. I said that, the, that this project is about maintenance and inclusion. So I, I not twisted by tweeted to uh, motors that I like. The first one is admin pages with great power. They come with great maintenance. And if it is everybody's Wikipedia, then it must be everybody's admin pages. Let's think about them. Thank you very much. Goodbye. with me just before lunch for a few minutes. Um, this is not a technical presentation. Uh, it might look so from, from the title, it might look so from the description, but I try to keep it, oh, maybe I should talk in the 
in the microphone. Uh, I try to keep it as non-technical as possible. Um, so it should be okay for, for everybody. Let's start with a name. <laughs> what does Patrocle mean to you? Maybe some of you who are more familiar with uh, Greek mythology have this image of a warrior uh, with a spear in his hand and a very aggressive posture. Well, for Romanian kids, no. This is Patrocle. <laughs> uh, for those of you like me who don't like dogs or are not familiar with the dogs, this is a short-haired tackle, it's called. Um, and it's the central, um, the central uh, person in a story for kids called Dumbrava Minunata or the, the Wonderful Clearing. Um, you will not find that on Wikisource or anywhere because it's still under copyright, but uh, yes, this is Patrick. And of course, the name was given because of the resemblance with patrolling. <laughs> So why did I do that? Well, in the Romanian Wikipedia, I've noticed that about a, up to a quarter of the patrols of the edits are unpatrolled. Actually, in, in reality, that number is lower because of some bugs in Twinkle and other reasons, but still a lot, like more than 10% are unpatrolled. We also lost two active Wikipedians in the last few years. Um, very active patrols, very, very active patrols. So that, that led to a feeling of uh, fighting the windmills somehow within the community. Because, uh, of course, those patrols were replaced by other people, but maybe they weren't so active. Maybe the, the involvement level also grew, so, you know, not, uh, not okay. Uh, maybe a raise of hands for who that sounds familiar? <laughs> yeah, yeah, as I expected. <laughs> um, another reason is that I saw, I learned about Cluebot NG, uh, which is a reverter bot active on English Wikipedia, where it does about 500 edits a day. But it has four maintainers, and also, also, the community helps. Um, for instance, it has a one revert policy. After it reverts once, uh, it won't revert the same user on the same page again. Uh, that didn't really work for me because that, that availability of people to follow up um, does not exist on smaller wikis. If I learned something from uh, running robots on the Romanian Wikipedia is that once you start using one, uh, people will rely on it and heavily. <laughs> So, I build a bot which does a few things, like patrol. This wasn't even the, in the slides um, a few days ago because it learned a few new tricks and I'll explain shortly why. It does reverts, of course. It does warnings because you want people to know that they did something wrong. It, uh, it does reporting. So each day you have a report of how many edits were reverted and so on. Uh, and, but also uh, it reports users who went above uh, the, the five, uh, five uh, vandalism limit and... No, it doesn't. Okay. <laughs> Should I? Okay. Um, so it also reports those, uh, those users to, to, the, to the admin pages. And finally, it follows up. And this is where it differs from Cluebot NG. Cluebot NG stops after the first edit, uh, while Patrocle actually continues to revert. And uh, this is mostly a social decision, right? We, we decided that this was the best course of action for our Wikipedia. This can be changed because there are all kinds of tweaks and knobs that you can, you can change directly from a wiki page and that the bot respects. But this is what, what we, we decided to do. So how do, did we do that? With a thing called Objective Revision Evaluation Service, which everybody knows as OS. In case you haven't heard about OS yet, this is the definition that their team is giving. Uh, we're not going to read this. It's, I don't understand half of it, and <laughs> probably neither do you, most of you. Uh, what you should keep in mind is that they use um, artificial intelligence, let's say, to give scores to the pages based on a number of criteria. 
And uh, the two most important criteria, which are available in most languages, where it's, it's already used, are damaging and, well, it's actually good faith, but I, I inverted it so that uh, the graph would look good. Uh, so basically what this means, there are scores between 0 and 1, and what this means is in this corner over here, it's really bad. Like blatant vandalism. In this corner over here, it is, okay, perfect, it's no problem. Uh, over here, it's bad faith, but not really destructive. And over there, it's damaging, but maybe, you know, with good intention, which also happens. Uh, and the other lines that are drawn here are limits, like here, over here, it's very likely that true, uh, over here, it's only likely, and over here, it's unlikely that this is true, because these numbers are not perfect, right? Uh, they, they are taught based on a number of edits that are, are described by humans as being destructive or good faith. And of course, they are not perfect. So we have some intervals instead of perfect numbers. As you can see, there is this big um, rectangle at the center where we can't really see anything about these edits. They might be good, they might not be good. We just don't say anything. Another thing to, to remember here is that even those numbers come with a confidence threshold. Uh, for instance, this number over here is 0 0.909. Uh, it means that there is um, a good chance that the ed edit is damaging, but it only catches about 75% of them. So about a quarter are actually more borderline. You know, you, it needs human intervention. We didn't want this to happen, so what we did is that we raised it a bit. So it is even more reliable. Uh, we experimented with it because there is, I didn't know a way to, to calculate those, those numbers, even if it's described on, uh, on MediaWiki. So we reached a, a number of 0 0.93. It doesn't matter, it depends on each wiki, how, how precise you want it to be. So what do we do with those? Well, everything above the line, we revert. But we learned that um, we were missing some. Of the, of the problematic edits. So what we did is we took into account the bad faith as well. So we also revert the very likely bad faith edits with a, with a lower threshold. But after, after running for about a month, I've noticed that um, we're, we were monitoring uh, in three, four, five hundred edits a day, but only re reverting two of them, on uh, two percent of them. On one hand, that's good news, because, sure, we don't have so much blatant vandalism, but on the other hand, it's not so much of a help for the patrollers, just 2% of their work done. So what we did is we also started patrolling, just in that little corner, right? Which on this graph, which is to scale, uh, seems small. But actually, uh, about a quarter of all unpatrolled edits are there. So a quarter of all the edits but done by anonymous users, by new users, even by more experienced users with a past of, you know, vandalism, are actually good. That's, that obviously increased the, the coverage by, by a lot. So does it work? I wanted to show you like a live demo, but because this is Sunday morning, uh, <laughs> there is no activity on the remaining Wikipedia, so uh, we'll just work with what we have, which is a screenshot from, uh, from a previous uh, day. And you can see there quite a, you notice the hours first. It's well past midnight when we don't have patrols normally active. Um, and sorry for the colors, there are very little options. Those with three dots are really the, which are both, those are which are both very likely damaging and very likely bad faith. <coughs> Those with just two dots are uh, very likely uh, damaging only. So this is a simple example. It was reverted straight on with a score of 0943. It's above the limit. It's clear. No problem. Now, the second one is more interesting. We had two very bad edits, one after the other, but the bots only caught one of them. Why? 
because this one, the second one, uh, was beyond the threshold. It was in the second part, uh, the second red square I show you. It was very likely bad faith, but you know, not so damaging, I would say. While this one was outside the threshold. So what we should learn from this is that as much as we would want to catch everything, uh, automation will not do everything for us. We still need to control manually, we still need to, uh, to look at what happens with call pages and so on, but uh, it still helps a lot because at 2 a.m. this could have gone unnoticed and then somebody comes in the morning and does a bunch of edits and it goes out of the recent changes and then it would be much more difficult to catch. So I say it works on Armenian Wikipedia. It has worked for six months now without any interruption. Uh, actually, a few days ago, like two weeks, I think, um, the container crashed on Tulsa, but it was automatically restarted. So I can say it worked from nonstop from uh, from April until now. But does it work on other wikis? Well, yes. If you want to, it can work on other wikis. It is open source. You can just take it and play with it. You know, um, make it work for you, or I can help you out. But I do need a few things from you, uh, which are, of course, community consensus. We don't run bots without uh, uh, community consensus. Um, a few translations, not not very much. I expect half an hour to an hour work on those. But those also include a few templates. For instance, uh, most Wikipedia's only have warnings until four, and then warning on level five is, is another name, and the names need to be standardized. And also, a willingness to follow up. I cannot be the contact person for your community. Because I don't speak the language, I don't know the, the way your community works, you do. There's one more prerequisite here, which is that yes. your language has ORS. ORS, yes. But actually, a lot of them have these days. And uh, indeed, ORS is missing from this, and it is a prerequisite. Now, if you don't have ORS, you can request it, uh, but it will take a lot of work to, to train the model. Uh, in our case, uh, there were like 2,000 edits to to manually review, to say if they're damaging, if they're not damaging, if they're bad faith, if they're good faith. And uh, we also recommend that this work be done by more than one person. In our case, it was done by 40% uh, by one person, 30% uh, by the second editor, and the rest of 30% by the others. And that showed. <laughs> like The way that user patrolled is now the way Otis patrols. That's it from me. If you have any questions, any suggestions on it? Yes. Yeah, so you are probably familiar with the famous <coughs> research on English Wikipedia by the same person who wrote uh, or is the Anna Pathbaker, The Rise and Decline of English Wikipedia, which basically found that uh, English Wikipedia started using increasingly aggressive automatic figure in 2007. And that uh, caused the editor redemption to decrease, and then community to decrease. So I am wondering if you are monitoring that in some way. We are monitoring that, not directly as part of, uh, of this project, but more of uh, the user group interest into editor retention and so on. Uh, and, but this, this actually started as a reaction to the desire of the community, uh, or some part of the community to follow suit on the Portuguese and Farsi Wikipedias which uh, pull the plug on uh, anonymous users. So uh, at some point I think a certain amount of decrease in editors might be preferable just as long as we can keep it open for anonymous editors to some point. But yes, we are monitoring it not directly as part of, of the part of <laughs> uh, are there also some statistics available, for instance, like what was we reverted and some statistics are like who caused it or something like that's a easily digestible form actually because like let's say as a, also like anti-Wikipedia doing a lot of patrolling and so on, I have some uh, 
some kind of insights or like principles. For some users, it's no point of actually like even reviewing that stuff because no, it's always good. Or it's some users are like always good. Okay, there's probably at least one typo somewhere. So I always like patrol. But I um, mean, there are some insights, but I can never be sure that this is what I am uh, myself perceiving. Like I say, where all the damaging elites are coming from. Uh, that might kind of be distorted in some ways. And again, this is <coughs> as this sort of automatic reversion. Yes. This, this probably has the best statistics available on what's actually sort of damaging. Um, and, uh, yes, but what it showed good? us, uh, well, this is the automatic report that the bot puts out. It doesn't have a lot of information. It says how many edits were cancelled, uh, were reverted, sorry, how many problematic edits were not reverted, those between the very likely damaging threshold and our chosen threshold, right? Uh, and then how many failed, well that's technical, how many we patrolled, how many we failed to patrol, and all in all how, many, how much we verified. But I did take a look manually and I learned that, um, I learned something about others, not about, <laughs> not about vandalism on Wikipedia. Uh, actually, what happened is that um, there is a very high bias against anonymous users in Oris, in our uh, train model used by Oris. Um, just two or three percent of all the um, bad faith edits were uh, assigned to users. Uh, so, looking into who causes that is a bit more difficult in this situation because. Uh, when you have use, uh, you, when you have IPs, they always change, you know. So um, I'm interested in ideas on that. <laughs> because I mean, it's just uh, I don't have a good response. Now. Because I mean, in there in the unit statistics, I mean, like maybe there's like let's say, for instance, when are the reverts taking place? For instance, like on time, like for instance, is it even your like let's say, I mean, of course, the edit amount, let's say, how many edits per hour mm -hmm. is got over stages, also like in weekdays and so on, in different times of the year. But how this sort of no, if you compare this pattern to the pattern of reverse, like are there some moments where those edits are more likely that there are damaging problems? Which is like in a similar case, we know that there is a time when, uh, at least I assume, it seems to be so that basically the schools are open and I mean, there are some. This is one of those very yeah. high times when you see a lot of that kind of type of damaging stuff, and also for this, uh, I think I to get, I myself interested to in getting better insight about actually this IP addresses thing, because I'd actually like to get some actual research done even like in a student case, like is it actually worth of allowing uh, IP addresses into the actual main space, main 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 space in a student wiki, because majority of problematic content comes from IP addresses. But at the same time, they make up incredibly small fraction of all of the edits. So yes. and, uh, this is really burning out slowly those patrollers. And again, this, I would just like to get a better understanding on how this thing works and the think that this potentially has a very good statistical that could be used to gain some, of course, it, I mean, yeah, it will not be usable for a student Wikipedia, but again, that those language versions will be different. But again, this seems a very interesting thing to get some additional insight. Yeah, we can we, we can use past reports to, to generate this kind of information. Thank you for the suggestion. Yeah, if you're interested in that kind of thing, we, we did a course based evaluation of anonymous edits for checking black provisions effects on Hungarian Wikipedia so you can find out what you get or basically in school, you, you download all the first data for all the edits and then you can do the graph. How many of the protein edits are damaging, how many of them are and it's not damaging. Which of course relies on the rest of the project and the ask that there is slightly biased in the terms is as well. To, to your comment about the bias of, or of your or of smaller, uh, do you consider the retraining or adding uh, we are another batch of... Uh, yeah, we are in discussions with the, the OST. The machine learning team, how it's called nowadays, to to see what we can do about it. Yeah. We have a, a it, it is fascinating. Right? Yes. It now it now patrols like a person, like a particular person. Yes. <laughs> yeah, we have the same machine in Wikipedia style. Yeah. So related to that, do you collect errors in some way? Like is there a button saying I have been the an error and then documenting somewhere to get that? Uh we 
don't particularly collect them, but uh, every every edit summary has a link to report errors. Uh, I haven't seen any so far. All right, folks. Okay, thank you very much. Also, take a picture. Another picture.